We are ahead of the curve, devoted to Christ, a voice for the voiceless, accurate in preferring solutions to difficult problems. We are non-conformists, defining culture, compassionate towards humanity and the earth. We are also extraordinary high flyers who are reframing the world we live in. High life, we advance. Praise the Lord. My name is Blessing Okere, and I'm one of the pastors in this house. It's uh, an honor to be called up here to serve God's word this Sunday. Thank you, Pastor Carlton. Thank you, Pastor Anita. Today, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that unite us, that bring us together as a body. And I'll be touching on some deep things and some hard things. Uh, if what I will say will offend you, please understand that I'm speaking the truth in love. So therefore, this would be a good place to pray for grace. Not only for the hearers of the word, <laughs> but for the speaker. <laughs> Father, thank you. Thank you because your spirit is here. The spirit of grace, the spirit of liberty, the spirit that makes truth real in our hearts. Spirit of God, we open all the chambers of our hearts to you. Every part of our heart. We're not going to hide anything from you. Because we cannot hide anything from you. You see everything. So we open up all our hearts to you. Heal. Heal us. Touch us where we need to be touched. Just like Jacob that you had to dislodge the muscles in his joint. If there are changes that need to be made in our lives that will be painful to us. Help us to accept these changes. Help us to receive truth that will change us forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I have a few words from the Lord. Every time I stand to minister, I always wait and see if there's anything the Lord will quicken in my heart. And there are a few things that I've written down. I mean, I'm learning this thing, so if it applies to you, just know that the Lord sees what is happening. It says, tell my children that I love them. I will never shut my eyes over you. I see everything and I still love you. It said, my hands won't fail and my ears are open always. Tell my children that I love them. I will never shut my eyes over you. I see everything and I love you. My hands won't fail and my ears are open always. And then this next one is for people who have been in ministry. Then there are about two or three of them here, I think. He said, you are my plowing instrument, and I will use you again like I did before. He said, we haven't finished yet. The work is still much. You are my plowing instrument, and I will use you again like I did before. We haven't finished yet. The work is still much. And this is for someone else. The journey is fruitful. This is not wasted time. The seeds you sowed shall bring forth a harvest that others will enjoy and bless the God that sent you. And you too will not lose your own reward. For I sent, I planted through you, I watered through you, and I shall reward you. If you need any assurances, place I place my name on the line for this. You shall receive your reward too. You shall receive your reward too. This is for somebody. He said the journey is fruitful. And I believe as that word is the marker. And one more. Hallelujah. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the sons of God. You who chose to endure undeserved shame. For the sake of peace shall not lose your reward. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. You who chose to endure undeserved shame for the sake of peace shall not lose your reward. A great stature and position is reserved for you in the family and in the community. And I, I, 
I, I, I don't know what that means, but I, I suspect that the, the conflict situation was in the family or community context. A great stature and position is reserved for you in the family and in the community. The God that separated Joseph and honored him over his brothers shall lift up your head in due season. Words from the Lord. Hallelujah. Please let us receive this word if we can. This word applies to you. Lift up your hands as we close our eyes and just thank the Lord. And receive the word. If it applies to you, if it applies to you, my plowing instrument, the Lord is saying to that person, get back in the ministry, get back in the ministry, get back in the ministry, start small, get back in the ministry, start somewhere, get back in the ministry, get back in the ministry, get back, get back, put your hand back on the plow, put your hand back on the plow, put your hand back on the plow, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I'm going to be reading from two main texts and today I'll be talking about my role our role in his body, so your role, my role in his body, and my part in his ministry. My role in his body, my part in his ministry. Uh, I'm going to read very quickly two main texts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 27, and Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. The first one I'll read from the New Living Translation, and the second one from the New King James Version. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 27 from the New Living Translation. The body, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some of us are Gentiles, some of us are slaves, some of us are, some of us are free. But we have been baptized, we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not a part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? If your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts and God has put each part where he wants it. How strange a body will be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't have need of you, or I don't need you. The head can say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen. While the more, the more honorable parts do not require special care. So God put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony amongst the members. So that all the members care for one another. If one part suffers, if one of us suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body. And each of you is a part of it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 16. And he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth in the body for their defying of itself in love. Praise the Lord. We are one body in Christ and every one of us has a part to play and every one of us has benefits to enjoy in the body. If we look at that scripture again, you will see that it says that nourishment comes from the joints. The joints, a joint is where two parts meet. Praise God. So you can't fully enjoy the benefits on the, of, of the body unless you are joined to the body, unless you play your part. Amen. And you can't play your part unless you understand the body, 
unless you love and respect the body and unless you know what you are meant to contribute. I'll say that again. You can't play your role and you can't enjoy the benefits of the body unless you understand the body and then you love and respect the body and then you know what you are meant to contribute. Understand the body, love and respect the body and know your role. You can't contribute unless you do this. And you can't benefit unless you do this. When we talk about understanding the body of Christ, uh, theologians will tell us about the difference between what they call the spiritual body of Christ and the mystical body of Christ. Allow us to do some theology this morning. Will that be all right? A little bit, not too much. The term the body of Christ can either refer to Christ's flesh and bone. All right? His physical body or his glorified body, his spiritual body. That body is real. That body is in heaven right now, sits beside the Father. The, the holes are still there. You know that. Holes in the hands, holes in, in, the, in the feet, and holes in the side. That was the body that was crucified on the cross, that was broken for us. That body, uh, blood was drained out of that body, and that blood bought our eternal salvation. Praise the Lord. Uh, but the body that Jesus has now is not the physical body he was born with. It's a spiritual body. It's a glorified body. An amazing body. The body can eat bread and fish, walk on water, and still pass through walls at the same time. Praise God. An overhauled body, you can stand next to him and you will not recognize him. And then you stand away from him and you see him again. Praise God. You know you're going to get a body like that too. Amen. If you think I look good now, wait until after I resurrect. <laughs> Glorified body. <laughs> well, that body. That body is symbolic of the mystical body which is the church. The mystical body of Christ is the church. Praise God. The hands, the feet, the, the ears, the head, they're all symbolic. They're talking about the church. You know, when I was a kid, growing up as a, uh, as a young Christian, I used to imagine, so the Bible says that there are many parts. Am I the ear, the hand? And there are like one billion Christians. If all of us are body parts, how many ears does that body have? Or maybe we are cells. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's symbolic. It's symbolic. Uh, we are the mystical body of Christ. Where Christ is the head. And we are his body from the neck down. It's us. And that mystical body of Christ is our connection to each other. And that connection is so strong. It will outlast this world. I believe that the Lord used the term body to explain how connected we are. Because the human body is the only natural, the most powerful natural example he can give. If he tried to explain it to us spiritually, our brains might explode. What happens when a body part is separated from the rest of the body? Huh? It dies. Okay? So, the body part dies. But what happens to the body? It becomes deformed. Becomes disabled, as we will say. It's not only the part that suffers. The body suffers as well. If a separation takes place. So, your pain is my pain. Your success is my success. If you scored the winning goal with your head, they won't give your head only the prize. Let's cut the head off and award the head and leave the rest of the body behind. Or you pass an exam and they say, you know, you use your hand to write. So we'll cut off the hand and honor the hand and leave the rest of the body. Does that happen? No, your success is my success. But in the same vein, your pain is my pain. And your shame is my shame. We're all going to be rewarded individually for what we do with our bodies in this earth. But for the big things of the kingdom, all of us have to do it together. You know, in Exodus, nobody was left behind. Huh? Pharaoh told them at the time, leave the old ones and the children behind and you, you guys go. He said, no, everybody's going to go. We're all connected in this. We need to love and respect the body. Our spiritual connection, like I said, is the strongest bond that can ever exist. So look at the person beside you and ask them, look at the person beside you. Ask them, are you in Christ? It's important to ask that question because if they're not in Christ, the next things I'm going to say, if they're not in Christ, just say, don't worry, I'll ask someone else. <laughs> are you in Christ? Okay, so if they're in Christ, tell them, I am joined to you and you are joined to me. We are joined forever in Christ. So you better like me. <laughs> Praise God. 
I, I think sometimes that perhaps the Lord will reward those of us that are always miffy about people. That person you are miffy against, you're going to put that person's mansion beside yours for all of eternity. So you wake up and you see that person every morning in heaven. It doesn't matter who they are. They might look different from you. They might talk different from you. They might walk different from you. They might even smell different from you. Yeah. <laughs> but we're all one in Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verse 26. For you're all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ. Like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. That scripture addresses the three most common forms of discrimination on the earth. Jew versus Gentile, ethnicity. Slave versus free, status, whether it's economic status or social status. Male or female, gender. The three most common reasons why people hate each other. Ethnicity, status, gender. Why we have prejudices. You know prejudice is learned. Prejudice is learned. You're not born with it. Charles Swindle said that. Chuck Swindle said that. If you have problems loving people that are different from you, you either learned it from someone or you learned it from your experiences. Ultimately, it's the devil that teaches prejudice and hatred. He's the father of liars. But every natural, natural human being has a capacity to hate. Did you hear that? Every natural human being has a capacity to hate. But the attitude of hatred is learned. If you doubt me, you look at kids. Kids play with each other. They don't see color. They don't see ethnicity. They don't see gender. They don't see status. You know, when Baraka, my daughter, and Barakel, my son, when they were kids, you just put them in those trolleys in shop right. You know those big trolleys? They had this baby basket, and you put them, and you roll them around. They would just be looking at you, because they were two, 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 one, one and a half, two. They got looking at you and bored, obviously, until they see somebody who's about their size. Have you noticed that? When they, and they don't look at the color, they don't look at the status, they want to get up immediately from the basket or the stroller if you have them in there to play with that person. Praise God. They make friends so easily, children. They play with anybody, regardless of their color, their tribe, their economic status, until someone tells them, we don't play with those kind of people. <laughs> oh, I'm going there. So if kids have the capacity to naturally love and connect with other people, how much more we, for the people that we are going to be connected to for all of eternity? Newsflash, if you can learn to hate, you can learn to love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, New King James. We love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. I didn't say that. The Bible said that. He is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. In Christ, there is no ethnicity. In Christ, there is no status. In Christ, there is no gender. That's what the scripture tells us. We are all one in Christ. If you say you are a Christian and you side with your prejudice, you are a liar. I didn't say that. The Bible said that. If you can't trust somebody in Christ because of their ethnicity, because of their status, because of their gender, you are a liar. You deny the faith. You deny the body. You deny Christ. If you can't associate with somebody in Christ because of their ethnicity, because of their status, because of their gender, you are a liar. You deny the faith. You deny the body. You deny Christ. If you can't fellowship with someone else, because of their ethnicity, because of their status, because of their gender. You are a liar. You deny the faith. You deny the body. You deny Christ. If you can marry somebody because of their ethnicity, because of their status, because of their gen... gen no, gen gender. <laughs> I got you guys there, right? We, we have to slow down on gender, on that, on that issue. Uh, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, right? I got your attention. <laughs> so let me rephrase the last statement. Right? <laughs> if you can marry someone in Christ because of their ethnicity or status, <laughs> you're a liar. You deny the faith. You deny the body. You deny Christ. We are confronted with tough choices, especially in this country. 
every day regarding ethnicity. Tough choices. Tough choices. Parents will tell you, you're not going to marry that person. What are you going to do? <sighs> I'm going to say this. It's going to be very uncomfortable, but I'll say it because I've been praying, but then the Lord is pulling my heart there. When I was about to get married, when we were about to get married, my wife and I were both Igbos, but uh, many of us know about the traditions, right? So before you get married, you go and do some search and find out your pedigree. And then there was a rumor somewhere that one of us, and I'm not going to specify which of us it is, was not freeborn. Right? And it was a, I had to have a difficult conversation with my parents. One that I've never had before and, or afterwards. And I was ready to make a decision that I don't know if I could have lived with. Anyway, the story checked out. I mean, later on, things sorted out and they found out that the rumor wasn't true. But those are the kind of things we're going to have to go through. Praise the Lord. Are you going to side with your tradition? Or are you going to side with the word of God? Praise God. What happens if we don't love and respect the body? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29 to 30. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, without honoring the body of Christ, uh, not just the spiritual body of Christ, but the mystical body of Christ, the church, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. Look at verse 30, please. That is why many of you are weak and some are sick and some have even died. Did you see that in the scripture? People are falling sick. People are dying. Untimely deaths because they are disrespecting the body of Christ. I didn't say that. The Bible said that. I want us to just chew on that for a few seconds. You disrespect the body and you open up the door to sickness, to weakness, and to death. Perhaps this might explain some of the things we're going through the church in Nigeria. Perhaps this might explain it. Our emphasis on where you come from, our emphasis on what you have, perhaps this is one of the reasons. How do you love and respect the body? That same scripture provides solutions. Look at verse 31. In the New Living Translation. It said, if we will examine ourselves, we will not be judged by God in this way. Yet when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned along with the world. So my dear brothers and sisters, when you gather for the Lord's Supper, wait for each other. Respect each other. Love each other. If you are really hungry, eat at home so that you won't bring judgment upon yourselves when you meet together. I'll give you instructions about other matters when I arrive. Just to put these things in context, in those days, their communions were like love feasts. All right? And then they would put a spread on the table, and then people would eat. But then the people who are wealthier will go first and take everything and then leave those people who are not in their social circles to starve. Hmm? Galatians chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. For the law, all the law is fulfilled in one word. This is from New King James. All the law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Beware. A few practical tips for respecting the body. Look at people with the eyes of love. Don't badmouth them. Don't gossip about them. If you have any issues, take it up with them directly. Before calling out people, especially on social media, because we seem to be very good with it now. Uh, WhatsApp status, so that it will disappear after a while, and then you call out whoever you want to call out, including or not limited to men of God and women of God on social media. Be sure that it is the Lord that is instructing you. Because when you are hurt, it's really difficult if you are feeling hurt by someone to distinguish between the Spirit of God telling you to do something and your personal pride. Praise God. It's difficult to separate your self-interest and the voice of the Spirit when something, somebody has done something to hurt you. Sometimes you, are, you have righteous indignation. You want to defend the faith. 
I'm going to defend the church. So I will speak out against him. Not because of what he did to me, but because of what he's doing to the church. Selah. <laughs> Be careful. Sometimes you think you are right about people and you are very wrong. You don't have the full story sometimes. You don't know the motives. So let God deal with them. Serve the body out of love. That's another tip. Serve the body out of love. Play your part in the body. Be responsible. Galatians chapter 2 says that we should bear each other's body. But thank God for verse 5 of that same scripture. Chapter 6 verse 2 says bear each other's body. But thank God for verse 5. It says everyone shall bear his own load. <laughs> everyone shall bear his own load. In the body of Christ, you, are not the bo- you should not be the body that all of us will bear. All the time. Praise God. Of course, times are going to come that each of us will have needs. And we have to be there for each other. But you play your part. You play your part. My mom used to tell me when, we were, uh, when, we, when I was younger, many hands make the work light. Praise God. Take care of yourself. Educate yourself. If you need help with that, I'm sure there will be a lot of people to help out. Get a skill. Contribute something in the body. Play your own part. Personal hygiene is also important. Praise God. I think I need to say that. Uh, and we have the love 10, thank God. If you need help, we are there. And if you need advice as well, get to somebody who can tell you about how to take care of yourself. Give your time and your substance. There are needs in the body. Give what you can. Support the poor and the weak. And when you are supporting people, bear in mind that people are going to take advantage of you. Be ready for that. Hmm? You know, there's an old saying that, I can't remember how it goes. You can't walk in Costain and get paid from PWD or something like that. I don't know how that saying goes. Who knows that saying? <laughs> Dating myself, I know. <laughs> it's an old Nigerian saying, you can't walk in Costain and get paid in PWD. What I'm trying to say basically is this. If you are doing something for people out of love, and you're serving God, don't worry whether they take advantage of you or not. The Lord will sort you out. Praise God. The Lord will reward your labor of love. Cover the shame of the body. Cover the shame of the body. And the Lord will reward your labor of love. Kenneth Hagin told the story I want to quickly tell, and I also share my own personal experience. He talked about when he was an evangelist, you know, going about ministering in different churches. There was a particular place he went to, and the, 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 the ministers, the church that was host, supposed to host him, they just left him and his wife. They left them in one uh, uh, flat and then they didn't, they didn't take care of them. They didn't come to check whether they've had breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever. They just expected them to show up <laughs> and minister and then go back. And that was it. So eventually they found out that, you know, in the house, they checked the fridge and then they found a little bit of food. And then, you know, they, it was it said, said a few eggs and some, maybe some Coca-Cola or something. That's what they had to feed on. And he said one, um, one of the members of the church came around and said, oh, how are you people doing and everything? He said, where are the pastors? Are the pastors, the pastors of the church? Have they been here to see? He said, no, we are fine. Okay, and he can say, we are fine. So the guy came around, gave, brought some food and everything. And then, you know, they ate and then they left. So, you know, the pastor kept pressuring them. That the person who came to visit kept pressuring them. Where are the pastors? That, have the pastors come to see you? He said, no, don't worry. We are all right. And he said that the reason why he did that was that he did not want to create strife in the church. All right? And as a music minister, I've been around. I've been in some amazing churches to minister in songs. And they honor you. And thank God for that. And then I've been in some churches where you will have to give an offering. Do you understand what I mean? As in you see their situation and you are so moved. Whatever they give you, you just add some more things to it and then you give it back to them and you try, you try not to let them know. All right? I've been, in, I've been in, 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 in places where, you know, you think, you think, looking around, that they should be able to give you an honorarium. And I'm, I'm being practical here. And they don't. Thank you so much for coming, brother. We're so blessed by your ministry. Those of you who know about my music ministry, I have a band of 13 people. <laughs> it's drummers, instrumentalists, and everything. We'll go there. You know, and you, instrumentalists, they don't, they don't hear <laughs> that, <laughs> they don't hear that you are going to sort them out. <laughs> Not these guys. <laughs> Praise God. 
Amen. I had to be practical in that, in that situation. All right? I'm not going to tell you any of those churches. I won't. Huh? And I leave it to the Lord. And I've seen the Lord bless me beyond like what I ever imagined. I've seen the Lord bless me beyond what I ever imagined from different places. Huh? Praise God. Because I'm not working for PWD or Costain. I'm working for the Lord. <laughs> so if I serve him here or in any other church, he will find a way to bless me. That's his problem. That's not mine. Praise the Lord. You can celebrate the Lord if you can. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland said that God has more than a billion ways to get you a million dollars. If you need it. So don't worry about what people are doing. The Lord will, ser- will, will, will sort you out. He will sort you out. Know your role in the body. Everybody has a gift. I'm going to be a bit fast. Everybody has, your, has a gift. And everybody has a part to play. But you need to know your role. The first thing, of course, to do is to get saved. I mean, it's as simple as that. I'm talking about the body. But I don't want to make any assumptions. You cannot contribute to the body unless you are a part of the body. So you receive salvation. That's the first thing. And then you begin to grow. You begin to grow in the body. You grow. How do you grow? You grow through getting filled with the Holy Spirit, studying God's word, getting discipled. We have our foundation classes. You have to come for those. And then you constantly fellowship with the Lord. You you can have zeal, but if you don't have knowledge, if you have not matured, your zeal can get you into trouble. If you doubt me, look for Apostle Paul and ask him. (laughs) Praise God. You know, you see a child, sees the mom ironing, and three-year-old, four, mommy, I want to iron too. Are you going to let the child handle the iron? I know. Why? Why? The child is not mature. In the same way, you might have a role to play in the body, but if you're not mature, if we give you the instruments, you're going to use the instruments and destroy your life. Praise the Lord. Paul told Timothy that you should not put a novice in the position of authority. Why? Who remembers that scripture? That the bishop must not be a novice. Why? That they will fall into condemnation if they sin. It's good that you have zeal, but zeal without knowledge is dangerous. Grow. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Study God's word. Meditate on God's word. Get discipled. Constantly fellowship with the Lord. Be faithful where God has placed you. Find a church that can help you grow. And stay there. Stay there until the Lord shows you otherwise. Stay there. You know, we're spoiled for choice nowadays. You wake up in the morning and Church Avenue, there are like (laughs) 50 different churches you can go to. All of them, you know, Telling you that you're going to be you know, you're very, very highly valued. And thank God for that. But you're not supposed to be in every church. There is a particular place that the Lord has destined for you. And you need to find it. Praise God. There are so many people that are supposed to be in this church and are not here right now. And perhaps the Lord is speaking to you through social media. God bless you. There might be, I don't know, but there might be some people that are here right now that the Lord doesn't want you to be here. I don't know. Find where God has a mark for you and be faithful there. Stay there. Don't leave because the pastor doesn't uh, rob you the right way. He said something that annoyed you. I'm going. Pastor has visited everybody. Did not visit me. I'm going. Nobody called me to welcome me in the church. I'm gone. Did you see the cloth that that usher was was wearing on that day? I'm gone. (laughs) The music is too fast. (laughs) The music is too slow. Not enough time for worship. <laughs> they spend too much time on the word. They always start on time. <laughs> you need to hear the reasons why people give for living. Ask the Lord what he will have you do. Discuss with people who are, people who are older and more mature than you in the faith. To know what you can do to serve the Lord. And then there is this amazing uh, uh, technique. If you can put that up. The shape technique from Eric Rees and Rick Warren, talking about spiritual gifts, S, H for heart's desire, A for abilities, P for personality, and E for experiences. It's an amazing way for you to find out what the Lord would have you do in the body. I put up a link as well. There's a link that you can see. I think it's the next picture. If you can go online, there are many other sites you can pick, uh, you can actually download an assessment form. And I think we even have it here in, our, in, in church as well. 
You can download an assessment form and it will help you know how best you can serve the Lord. Praise the Lord. Again, I'll talk about that spiritual gifts. What has the Lord supernaturally blessed you to do? Your heart, what you have a passion for? Your abilities, your natural talents, your personality. What does not my personality best suit me to serve? So if you're an introvert, for instance, perhaps ushering may not be the right thing for you to do. Amen. If you are still struggling and the Lord is helping you, let me put it that way, the Lord is helping you with your temper, ushering is not probably not where you should be. <laughs> I said you should sit down here. <laughs> Madam, you did not sit down here. <laughs> where do you want me to take you to? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> if children running around gets on your nerves, please don't go to children's church. Yeah? Stay in the adult church and serve. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So your personality and uh, experiences, spiritual experiences, painful experiences, educational experience and ministry experience. Those are the things that you can, can point you towards where you will go. You can get a link online, download a form and it can help you do that. So I just want to close again with saying this. For you to play your part in the body and to benefit from the body, you must understand the body. We are one. In Christ, we are one. There's no Jew nor Greek. There's no Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa. There's no um, American, Nigerian, African, European. We're all one. We're all one in his body. Praise God. You must love and respect the body. You must love and respect the body. There are consequences for not respecting the body. Scripture tells us that this is the reason why some of us are weak, some of us are sick, and some of us are dying because we're not respecting the body. And then you must know what you are meant to contribute. Let us pray. High Life, we advance.